So today I have another non-working Dyson HD01 hairdryer. This one does have the inline filter and the GFCI built into the core. And this one is not powering on. Everything feels good with the switches. Everything's actually intact on this one, which is good. You never know when you buy one broken. But let's plug it up and just show you here. It's not coming on at all. No response. So let's unplug it. So this video will be dedicated to the disassembly of the Dyson hairdryer. I'm shooting this video in better resolution than previous versions. And from now on with a repair, I can just reference this disassembly video instead of showing this in all the repair videos. I'm gonna use my Kaweek screwdriver set. We have two here with the T6 bit on the bottom to remove the screen filter. It comes off just like so. And then we also have another one that's actually holding the handle on here. Next, we'll pop the buttons off. I will apply gentle pressure, and if they're really tight, I'll put a little bit of heat from my hot air gun. I didn't see any issue there popping them off. They're just glued on. And with that screw removed, it should slide off like so. We'll go ahead and remove this noise abatement filter in here. And we have a screw here that's covered up with a little rubber seal here. It's only one this T8 size, and it's the long one. It actually holds the handle together here. And after that, we'll slide the O-ring down. And the upper O-ring, you can just slide up, as we'll see in a minute. We have three more screws here. These are T6 also. So these three of you will notice they'll be a little bit shorter. And the long one goes, of course, by the cord strain relief. So just remember that those three are shorter. And this half will pop right off. It's got that little bit of tape. Yeah, it's got the tape right there, yep. Now I'm going to be very careful here. I'm going to plug in the GSCI and make sure it's reset. With my sharp meter probes, I'm going to penetrate this heat shrink and make sure 120 volts is getting through, and it is. So now we'll unplug, so we know we are getting 120 volts through, at least to our switch at this point. And by the way, I'll have a video as well looking inside of this mystery filter box, and maybe the GFCI as well, if you're interested. I'm just going to unplug this little, what I believe to be a switched reluctance motor. We do have a little ground clip here, and I either just take a small screwdriver and push the little latch like so, and then it'll slide right off. This little motor turns at 120,000 RPM. It's, it's pretty impressive for its size, especially at 100 watts. It does move a lot of air for its size, that's for sure. And by the way, I'll get the hair out of this motor, just like I did on my very first HD01 repair. Now I'm going to push this O-ring all the way up out of the way, and we'll get our switch cover plate off, just like so. It's just really held on by the O-ring, uh, by both O-rings, actually. And now we see four screws here, and they are going to be T5. But this is going through to our white backing plate that covers over the switches. So once we get these four off, this little plate will lift right out, just like so. I will say, pay close attention here to how these wires are routed through, because this can be a booger to put back sometimes. The way it goes under the board, as you'll see when we remove this Kapton tape, the hot wire, of course, going straight to the switch, and the neutral wire goes on through to the, the main control board. I'm just going to fast forward through some of this. I'm just going to take my razor knife and just simply cut the heat shrink off. We'll have to put this back on later, and just try to be careful with these connectors because they are very, very tight connectors and make a really good connection to be, for their size, that is, and... I've always tried to be careful with these and always reuse them, even if I had to solder the wire on to a different cord or something of that nature. But here I just get the pliers and pull them, and it's, yeah, they're, they're really tight. No latch, it's just a really, really tight quick connect. Now let me put my screws back in order. I've been knocking them all over the place here. 
So now as we route our wires through and get them all towards the opening, this is very important that we don't let our wires get caught up because they can easily get ripped from the board. If you feel more comfortable taping them up, you can do so. I've done enough of these that um, I just go very slowly and have patience um, as I turn this and make sure they don't get caught. Next, I'm going to remove this back cover plate. Uh, sometimes these pop off fairly easily, so I'll try my little spudger tool first. But sometimes they can be a booger. And yeah, this one's trying to bend my spudger tool. It's definitely being tough. The spudger tool just don't mar up the housing as bad, so I like to try it first. A screwdriver, you got to be very careful not to damage the housing. And man, this one is really being tough. It's usually not quite that tough to make it pop off. I'll show you in a minute, but these just have clips on them. I'll go ahead and take this O-ring out of the way so I don't pinch it. But usually you don't have to do that. Usually the plate will pop off. Yeah, the whole thing was wanting to move, but it did pop off. So this is the part I was talking about, about holding your wires so they just push up and into the cavity. Because we got to rotate this whole heater assembly. The heater and main board assembly has to rotate. And the way these clips are, you could probably even rotate it with this if you could get a grip on it. But I wouldn't want to break these tabs, the same tabs that I was talking about that locked in really well on this one. So I usually use something kind of like a spanner wrench. I don't really have one to fit it. As in previous videos, I've used these, these long needle nose pliers. They open up enough to, to get in a spot here where you can turn it. But if you happen to have something like a side grinder wrench as well, um, this is a Milwaukee banner wrench. It just happens to fit enough to actually make it move. It'll fit in one of the holes here, like so, and then grab on the other part of the plastic. And I can rotate clockwise, like so. And I'm just making sure here, very easy and very slowly, and with patience, just making sure that the wire in that switch is not catching on anything. It takes a little bit of force to get it to bump off of the um, the stop and the little lock. And then after that, it turns fairly easy. So just make sure you're not pulling too hard as you turn. And then once it starts, make sure the front is turning also. They should kind of turn together if you keep this the two halves tight. But it looks like to me on this one, the front did not pop out. So I'm going to use these pliers here and go counterclockwise here, but still the same direction, if you remember, as we were going. You just want to keep going the same direction, like so. And there we go. We're out of the groove. And just like threads, it's actually popped out. You just got to turn it about, probably not quite half a rotation, and just make sure our wires are going into a, a cavity here in between the two halves. And just gently and easily just work it out. You see how metal ring on the front has fell off here. I used to think they glued that in place, but I don't think they do. I think it's just a tight fit, and it does pop off pretty easy. So the wires are coming slowly but surely. Just nothing's holding there but the wire, so just gently here. And there we go. We're out of the housing just like that. So here we go. Here's our heat and control board assembly. We are pretty much totally disassembled here. You will have to take that snap ring there off if you were to have to repair the board like I did on the Dyson hairdryer repair number two. I did a board repair on that one. But typically that snap ring just stays in place and makes sure it's still locked in and it just goes together like so. But we will have to look at the front of this one and just do some checks on voltage getting through the switch and through the heating element. So we're going to remove this Kapton tape here. Now to remove the Kapton tape. We can remove our NTC and it's a high voltage ionizer bar. I've talked about that in the previous videos as well. It actually puts out up to 3000 volts DC to ionize the air. It is drying your hair. Pretty cool feature there. We see here we got our black wire that through the switch that takes the power through. And I'll talk about this more and maybe even have a wiring diagram in the next video on the repair of this one. And by the way, you may decide to mark this before you take the cover off where the NTC and your ionizer bar goes. That way it's easier for you to line up. I typically do this, but you don't have to. Um, once you know that this front cover is keyed, I'll show you it only goes one way and fits well. But you need to know that so you don't try to force it like so. And the reason it goes on so well in that spot is because of these little slots on the edge. See here and 180 degrees across 
and that's where your power bus comes across to your heating elements. So you will have 120 volts power on those as they come across on the mica that feeds power to your thermal fuses. And I'll share in the next video as I go through checking the element and check the thermal fuses in the repair video. And after the repair, I will also try to upload a reassembly video of putting the Dyson back together and showing parts here. So I hope you found this video helpful today of the Dyson hairdryer disassembly. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll have a link in the video description for some tools and interesting items that I find very helpful on my workbench. And any of those links you click on are affiliate links and they really help support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching and God bless.